Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome back to my channel. I pray that you are all in the best of health and iman. So this is the last preparation for the month of Ramadan. I went to my local stores um, and bought a couple of things to help me complete my preparation for Ramadan. Now my fridge was a place that I really wanted to reorganize so that it can motivate us to eat more healthily this Ramadan. So I popped into TK Maxx and bought some fridge organization items. Um, they do have these on Amazon so if you're interested I will leave a link in the description box down below if you don't have a TK Maxx near you. Um, what I recommend is that you buy the items that you know will fit into your fridge and also the things that you need so if you go into tk maxx it kind of gives you an option to pick and choose exactly the sizes um, and boxes of items that you need so for me i needed places that i can keep uh, vegetables and fruits um, and things like that just to encourage us like i said to eat more healthily Um, this is the situation currently with my fridge as you guys can see I just put stuff wherever really um, it's not too bad but it's important to us that we utilize this fridge to you know as best way as possible because this is the only fridge that we have um, so all items has to go in here all the meals that I prep um, beforehand all my soups and everything basically so I do my best <laughs> to try to make sure that I put it in order but this is what I'm dealing with at the moment so as you guys can see I'm starting off with removing everything from the fridge for the most part the fridge wasn't too bad I had cleaned it the week before um, but like I said in order to reorganize everything I have to take everything out so that is what you guys see me um, doing here and as I was removing everything I'm already thinking about okay where could I place um, uh, my uh, containers so that I can utilize my fridge and make it work for us in the best way possible um, and also thinking about the type of items that I have that will normally go into the fridge this is one of the most trickiest part with when it comes to fridge organization so there was a lot of thought that went into this before the organization uh, finally begun Okay, so as you guys can see, my fridge is nice and clean and I am ready to start thinking about where I want my items to go into. So it took a lot of rearranging. I just kept going over and over and just picking out different areas that I thought things could settle into and just what would work and going back and forth, back and forth till I finally reached the point that I thought, yes, I'm happy with what I have. Like I said, it took a little bit of like work to get there also so i see some of these fridge organization videos on youtube and they're great they, they look very aesthetically pleasing but i wonder if it actually works in real life because you also need extra space like empty space to put things that you didn't plan for um so i'm really trying to bear that in mind when i'm organizing my fridge and i'm also open to like it being flexible and being able to change certain things if i need to so during ramadan one of the things i like to do is to make like fresh juices and things like that since ramadan tends to fall in like the spring time in the last few years so i plan to do that this year also and that's what i got this very long container for and i also know that sometimes i store um carrots and things like that and um spring onions in like glass uh vessels so i need this some space to keep those items so i'm starting off with my condiments so i'm separating items like ketchups and barbecue sauces separate from um, like my jams and mustards and things like that so keeping those separate and in that container i am going to be storing my ketchups and items like that um, and then i already had this so i didn't go out and buy it but bear in mind where you're going to keep your eggs because you know the regular containers that the eggs come in they're great but sometimes you forget how many eggs you have in there so when you can see things it makes it easier so i'm placing my eggs in there and as you can see real life the eggs don't fit perfectly into that container so i might have to get a larger um, egg container but for now that will work um, and then this particular container is actually made for uh, veggies or fruits that 
you know you need to have the water drain out but i'm actually going to use it to reorganize my organic um, greek style yogurts i'm also going to place my cheese inside this container over here i picked this up from tk maxx as you guys saw at the beginning and i really like it because it's silicone based and you can seal it and reuse it as well okay so in this large container i'm going to keep my um greens these are the greens that i like to blend for my smoothies so again something to motivate me to remember to eat my greens um, and then in this little container i'm going to have some grapes grapes are our favorite in this household and then in the other side i can't actually find the clip i put my dates um, for the month of ramadan as you guys know it is so not to break your fast with an odd number of dates okay and then in this container i'm going to have my, like my fresh um, fruits so bell peppers and tomatoes and things like that that I always use on a regular basis so after all of that organizing it was just time to put everything back into place I needed a shelf where I could have my soups that I make my stews and things like that we could put you know leftover rice and things like that so the very bottom shelf will be for that but as you guys can see this is what my fridge is now looking like I'm very happy with it alhamdulillah it's not pinterest perfect but for now it works and i do need a few more containers for like the space where like the mango is i can get one or two more containers that i can have spare so whenever i buy mangoes and things like that they can go in there but for now alhamdulillah i'm happy with that Okay, next we are finally moving into the proper fruit prep section of this video and I am starting off by creating, um, removing the skin off of these beans. I love to have um, kind of like a, I don't know how to call it, but it's called akara. Um, it's a Nigerian or West African dish that people love and I love it too and it's made with beans. But the issue is separating the skin from the bean itself before you make, you create this, uh, it's kind of like a pudding, before you make it is the most frustrating part and that's the part that takes quite some time because you have to let the beans kind of soak for a while before you blend it and things like that and that takes a little bit of time so that was something i really wanted to get done so as you guys saw i start off by soaking the beans and i like to soak my beans for two days at least because it helps with my digestion i'm someone that doesn't digest beans very well they make me very gassy but i find that when i soak these for two days and then i remove the skin off of the bean and then I make the pudding, I have no problems at all with digestion. So if you have issues with digesting uh, beans, which stops you from enjoying your akara, then this is something that you might want to do. Okay, so yeah, after a couple of days, it is ready. As you can see, it's very frothy. Um, so I just remove all of that. I wash it off. There is a technique, as you guys can see, kind of rubbing it together so that the skin comes off. But also the blending part, which is you blend it very briefly so it aggravates the skin so the skin can come off very easily. And then you're left with this and it looks really nice. And what I'm going to do with this is refrigerate it. That's why I'm making so much. So whenever it is time for me to prepare the pudding, I just have to remove a bag out of the freezer adding the you know peppers and whatever i need to blend it with and it's ready to make and it makes life a lot easier right so that's the whole point of this video is me just demonstrating things that you can do in advance before ramadan begins that can make the month of ramadan easy for you you know i know most of my viewers are women and most of us we work if we don't work we we have children to take care of um so it's, it's we're always busy and you know that the energy that we have in Ramadan, we, we should be using it to do as much worship as possible. So the less time you can spend in the kitchen this Ramadan, the better. But of course, your family still have to feed. You still have to feed. So do the things that will make life easier for you. That's just my whole point with this video. OK, you have the energy before Ramadan. It begins. You've got a few days left utilize it don't wait until the month of ramadan to be stressing out about things that you know you need to do and worrying too much if you need to go to the stores to buy like food in bulk 
do that because you know when you're fasting and you have to carry like heavy you know food items you just don't have a lot of energy for it so that is just what this video is all about really cooking is not easy okay and this part is the messy not so fun part so here you see me cutting and cleaning out my mackerel mackerel is a fish i never used to like like i hated the taste of this fish because it just smelled too fishy but i figured a way of doing it that actually makes it so delicious so i'm going to share that with you guys today but i'm going to start off by preparing the fish that i'm going to use to make this stew you can use any fish but i highly recommend you try this um particular fish because the taste just makes the soup so much more nicer so as you see there i'm seasoning with fish seasoning and a little bit of pink himalayan salt you can just season with just salt alone if you prefer and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this fish in the oven instead of frying it when you fry it it retains that fishiness that i just particularly don't like if you don't mind it go for it just fry it it'll be fine but i find that when i put it in the oven it comes out like the, the juice drains onto like the bottom section that you guys see there and the fish just becomes a lot more denser outside it's a lot crispier because you know if i add a little bit of olive oil i find to the outside the outside is just the outside just turns out much more crispy and the inside is nice and chewy and soft and it's not as oily and fish smelling okay i do know that the oil in fish is actually quite a healthy oil so if you don't mind the smell go for it fry it but like i said as you guys can see here putting it in the oven for about 20 minutes 25 minutes it comes out like this and it's just it's beautiful it's so nice the smell alone is like wow but when you're cleaning it your house is gonna smell i'm just telling you i'm just letting you know it ain't gonna smell nice so open the window okay <laughs> but once it's prepared like this trust me it's going to make the dish a lot nicer but yeah now we're going to move on to making some uh soup in advance so for those of you who have low iron eating your greens especially um spinach is high in iron so this is something that us women really should be eating a lot of and i'm going to make make this spinach stew it's so easy to make guys but it's absolutely delicious if you don't make anything else i show in this video try this out and let me know okay you can serve it with rice it's very nice with rice but ideally um in nigeria this is people have this with like a uh, fufu or eba any kind of you know meal like that but really you can eat it with anything so for this you are going to need some spinach you're going to need fresh tomatoes ideally but if you don't you have canned tomatoes it will do but the fresh tomatoes will make a difference to the taste of this and you want to chop it quite in large chunks and um, some onion So as you guys saw, you're going to need to add some oil to your pan. You're going to throw in the, really it should have been onions first, but I forgot about that. So we move. You're going to throw in your onions and throw in your tomatoes. And also I added some peppers in there as well, because when it has a little bit of a spicy kick, it's really nice. And then you're just going to let that simmer and season it, basically. Once it's nice and seasoned, you are going to add in your fish so you guys saw me washing fish earlier on 
that is why because we're going to use it in this um, dish the fish that you use will make a slight difference to the taste of the stew at the end of the day so i highly recommend you use the type of fish that you guys have seen me use in this video it really makes a difference and i also recommend that you don't fry the fish that you um, put the fish in the oven it actually makes it a lot more tastier and it makes it less uh, fishy if you like i actually used to dislike this fish a lot i couldn't stand eating it but ever since i started preparing it in this way i'm actually able to really enjoy it it's really nice so um yeah i highly recommend you give that a go and the little bit of olive oil just makes the skin a little bit more crunchy so you get that crunch on the outside and the softness on the inside when it comes out of the oven and it's so delicious okay so as you guys can see i break apart some of the fish i add it into the stew and then after that give it a few more minutes to cook and then i add water and i also add the rest of the fish in there and then i throw in my spinach the spinach should be the last thing that goes into this pot of soup guys why because we don't want to overcook our greens when we overcook our greens sometimes we can lose the nutrients in it so as soon as the spinach melts kind of wilts in there you're ready to go and i loaded this up with so much spinach guys and that's the thing about spinach it looks like you have a whole load but as soon as it you know wilts it turns you know becomes very small so just throw in as much as you can and This was the end result. It looked and tasted so delicious. I had to take a pause and put some on the side and eat it just like that, just because it was smelling so good, guys. So highly recommend you try this. But what I'm going to do is put this in the freezer. I'm going to freeze it up and we're probably going to have this during like the first or second week of Ramadan, inshallah. All right, the next thing that I need to prepare in advance is my millet paste that I used to make um, a pudding called Coco. So I really love having this drink during the month of Ramadan and it's the spicy version that I enjoy and it is made with millets. So what you see there are millets, I'm pouring it into this container and I'm going to add some water to it and let it soak for a little bit. It's just going to make the blending part a lot easier. I made a video I think last year or the year before um, a Ramadan vlog that I included how I made this into it. So basically I'm just going to soak it for a little bit and then when it's ready, I'm going to blend it with a couple of spices. So we have ginger, black pepper and some chili flakes as well. And what I'm going to do is chop up those um, ginger parts, add in my black peppercorns and my uh, chili flakes and then add in the millet and give it a good blend. So the idea is to blend this with some water included. Don't blend it dry. When Once this is blended, I'm going to sieve it. And then I'm going to let it sit for maybe a day or a few hours or maybe overnight even would be fine. And then you end up with a nice pulp that you can use to make this drink. It's really important to me that I get to enjoy some traditional meals during the month of Ramadan. So whatever traditional meal you enjoy having from wherever you're from, make that during the month of Ramadan. And if it's something that you can make in advance, then take advantage of the energy that you have now and make that in advance and keep it in the freezer and when Ramadan enters, you can make life easier for yourself. So that's just what I've done here.
So next I'm going to prepare some chicken in advance. I'm going to season it and again, put it in the freezer in advance because during the first or second week of Ramadan, inshallah, I want us to have this with, you know, a nice mix of vegetables on the side and maybe some rice or something like that. If you guys are not, um, and also, also guys, and so guys, don't forget to follow me in my Ramadan vlogs this year, inshallah, I will share with you when I actually prepare this meal. Um, but for now, I'm just going to make sure I have some seasoned uh, chicken inside the fridge. So that's just what you guys see me doing here. So as you can see, prepar preparation for Ramadan, preparation for Ramadan in terms of food prep doesn't have to be complicated. It's basically everything you can do to make life easier for you during the month of Ramadan. Because I know us women, we have the habit, especially those of us with large families, of just spending your whole life, like the whole day of Ramadan is spent in the kitchen cooking when you could have been using that time to pray could have been using that time to read quran and everything there's nothing wrong with cooking for your family there's a blessing in it but at the same time we must not forget that as women it's also very important that we reserve some time to direct acts of worship that is also very important so let's not spend all of, all of our life in the kitchen so that's why we're going to do the best that we can to prepare beforehand so that the month of ramadan is as easily and smoothly as as possible for us and that we can manage our homes and manage our families and manage our work without it being overwhelming inshallah so guys this is my preparation for ramadan as you guys can see i have shown you step by step along the way as i've gone through doing multiple things this year to prepare for ramadan i hope you find it beneficial inshallah i will see you guys on the first of ramadan inshallah for the first ramadan video can't wait for that may allah accept it from us may allah help us to witness and complete the month of ramadan i mean assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh